Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to take one of the most important steps in interpreting an electrocardiogram, or ECG, the identification of cardiac rhythms. When we can accurately recognize the heart's electrical rhythm, we're able to analyze its behavior more effectively, and in some cases, even anticipate certain events before they occur. But before we move into discussing cardiac diseases and abnormalities, we first need to understand, what does a healthy, normal ECG actually look like? The most essential feature of a normal ECG is its rhythm, which should be sinus rhythm. This naturally raises a couple of key questions. What exactly do we mean by sinus rhythm? And how can we identify in the simplest way whether a heart rhythm is truly sinus or not? As you may remember, in our previous videos, we fully explained the heart's electrical conduction pathways. But right now, let's do a quick and practical review, just to make sure everything is crystal clear. As you know, within the heart, there's a special group of muscle cells that are different from the rest. Instead of contracting themselves, their primary role is to generate and conduct electrical impulses, impulses that trigger the contraction of different parts of the heart. These specialized cells are organized into distinct structures, such as the sinoatrial node, SA node, the internodal pathways, the atrioventricular node, AV node, the His bundle, and the left and right bundle branches. In a healthy heart, although nearly all cardiac cells have the intrinsic ability to generate impulses and contract spontaneously, the SA node is the dominant pacemaker. It fires at a higher frequency, about 60 to 100 impulses per minute, and therefore takes control of the heart rhythm. As a result, the other cells follow its lead instead of producing separate impulses. So when the rhythm of the heart is governed by the SA node, we call this a sinus rhythm. However, sometimes, for various reasons, the SA node may weaken or fail to function properly. In such cases, other parts of the heart can take over control of the rhythm, which may lead to significant problems. We'll discuss these abnormal rhythms in detail later in this video. But first, let's learn how to recognize whether the heart's rhythm is truly sinus on an ECG. When analyzing an ECG, we should begin by asking ourselves four key questions. One, do we see a P wave on the ECG? Two, is the P wave upright in leads I and two and inverted in lead AVR? Three, is there one P wave before every QRS complex? If the answer to all three of these questions is yes, then the rhythm is sinus. But there is one more important question. Four, is the heart rate between 60 and 100 beats per minute? If the answer is also yes, then we have a normal sinus rhythm. If not, then we may be dealing with either sinus tachycardia, if the rate is above 100, or sinus bradycardia, if the rate is below 60. But why are these questions so important? The image you're looking at is a schematic representation of the heart, clearly showing the cardiac conduction system. In sinus rhythm, the electrical impulses originate in the sinoatrial as a node and spread throughout the atria. The overall vector of these impulses eventually converges at the atrioventricular AV node. This atrial depolarization produces the P wave on the ECG. Now here's the key point. If the net direction of the electrical impulse is aligned with the axis of a lead, that lead will record a positive deflection. If the impulse is moving opposite to the axis of a lead, it will appear as a negative deflection. Because of the normal orientation of the cardiac electrical axis, in leads I and II, the impulse travels toward the leads, so the P wave is upright. In lead AVR, the impulse moves in the opposite direction, so the P wave is inverted. This explains why, in sinus rhythm, the P wave is positive in leads on and II, but negative in AVR. Next, once the impulse passes through the AV node, it travels down the His bundle, then into the right and left bundle branches, ultimately depolarizing the ventricles and forming the QRS complex. Therefore, if the rhythm is truly sinus, every QRS complex must be preceded by a P wave, because the ventricular depolarization cannot occur without the atrial impulse passing through first. Finally, since the SA node is the dominant pacemaker with the highest firing rate, the heart rate it generates usually falls within the normal range of 60 to 100 beats per minute. So, how can we determine the heart rate on an ECG? The method is simple. Take a look at this ECG strip. First, identify two consecutive R waves. 
Then count the number of large squares between them. For example, in this ECG, there are four large squares between two R waves. Now divide 300 by that number. Alternatively, you can count the small squares between two R waves and divide 1500 by that number. If the resulting number falls between 60 and 100 beats per minute, then the rhythm is within the normal sinus range. So now we can clearly see why these questions matter. By answering them, we can determine whether the rhythm is sinus or not. But what if, for any reason, the rhythm is not sinus? This happens when the SA node weakens and another focus within the heart takes over as the dominant pacemaker. In that case, the answers to our four questions will change. And from those changes, we can identify what type of rhythm we are dealing with. In general, depending on which part of the heart assumes control, we can classify four main types of rhythms. One, sinus rhythm, where the SA node is the primary pacemaker. We've already discussed this. Two, Atrial rhythm, where another focus within the atria takes over. Three, junctional rhythm, where cells from the AV node or the His bundle become dominant. Four, ventricular rhythm, where pacemaking activity arises from the ventricular cells. To recognize each of these rhythms, we still ask the same four key questions as before. For example, let's take atrial rhythm. Do we see P waves on the ECG? Yes, because the impulse originates in the atria, it still produces a P wave before reaching the ventricles. Are the P waves upright in leads I and II and inverted in AVR? Here the answer becomes uncertain. It depends on where exactly in the atria the impulse is generated. We'll explore this in detail with the schematic on the next slide. Is every QRS complex preceded by a P wave? Yes, since the impulse begins in the atria, it must pass through them before activating the ventricles. Is the heart rate between 60 and 100 beats per minute? Not in this case. In atrial rhythms, the rate is usually between 40 and 60 BPM, since atrial pacemaker cells fire more slowly than a healthy SA node. In the next video, we'll analyze the other rhythms, junctional and ventricular, and see how the answers to these same four questions reveal the underlying pacemaker. Now let's take a closer look at the different cardiac rhythms on this diagram of the heart. Here, we see the heart and its normal conduction system. If the SA node weakens or loses its ability to function properly, other regions of the heart can assume control of pacemaking and rhythm generation. If a focus within the atria takes over, the rhythm is called an atrial rhythm. When it comes to our second question about the P wave axis, the answer depends on where in the atrium the impulse originates. If the focus is close to the SA node, the overall vector still points toward the AV node, so the P wave will look normal and the answer is positive. But if the focus arises from a different part of the atrium, the vector may shift in the opposite direction. And in that case, the answer to the second question will be negative. If the junctional region, the AV node or his bundle takes over, then we call this a junctional rhythm. And finally, if a pacemaker focus arises within the ventricles, the result is a ventricular rhythm. Thank you for watching. If this video helped you, please like it and share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the bell so you don't miss new videos. Take care and see you in the next video.